Good evening, Chipiteros, and welcome again to Pillow Talks. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to share with you our uh, social media links. Uh, our website, of course, is chupitero.com. And here are our uh, Facebook uh, page and Facebook group links. And if you'd like to uh, watch previous episodes of Pillow Talks, you can go to our YouTube channel. And that's the link to our YouTube channel. So, as always, I begin with analyzing the markets. Okay. So, I have here... Uh, uh, a two-year weekly chart of the PSEI index. Okay, so if you've if um, you've noticed, the market has done nothing but just move sideways in the last two weeks. Uh, sorry, the last two years, no. And in the last couple of months, it's actually been you know sort of like uh, in a sideways to downward trend, no. Even up to now, no. Even despite this. Uh, seven-week rally of the market um, we are still in a sideways to downward trend okay and we are actually uh, approaching um, resistances at current levels no so this is the trend of the market right now it looks something like that no so parang it's like we are rallying um, uh, from a da from a downtrend, and we are now approaching the resistances of that downtrend. Okay, so that's how the market looks like in the weekly perspective. Okay, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if prices even climb up to six six or maybe even six seven. No, who knows? No, but uh, we are at resistances already right now in the medium term in the weekly charts okay and of course it's so tempting for those who bought down below to take profits and it's also tempting for those who got stuck above to start you know uh selling at break even or with slight losses na lang diba? so that's the condition of the market now in in the weekly charts of course, in the daily, we are still pushing higher, you know, and again, we we are now up five, five out of the last seven weeks, you no, know? and from the looks of it, uh, it does seem like we will uh, test six five as early as next week, you no. Know? Um, if you look at this consolidation here, you no, know, uh, there was a previous support level here, just. At around the 6,550 to about 6,600 levels, no. So that used to be an area of support wherein people, you know, tend to um, buy the dips. This was uh, last uh, late August to early September, no, before the market collapsed. Um, so I would tend to think that a lot of people are probably stuck at those levels, no? So, um, and could be looking to sell, you know, if they, if maybe they hit break even levels, okay? So this market right now is, you know, if you're still holding on to some positions, I would just recommend to hold and maybe just put stops down below um, uh, the our support right now is around the 6300 level no i guess as long as we continue to hold above 6300 we will continue to push higher no so but 
uh, is it still prudent to buy at these levels? If you ask me, I wouldn't. No, again, if you look at the weekly charts, and if we are still in a sideways to downward trend, no, or even if it's just a sideways trend, you know, there is still that possibility that you know prices can drop like three, four hundred, five hundred points lower in the next you know a uh, couple of months, no. You know, just like what happened here, no. You'll notice we had a downtrend here in um, uh, early 2021, then followed by a very strong rally in mid-year, no. And it looked like the uh, the market was out of the woods already, but suddenly the uh, prices dropped for four consecutive weeks in a row before it made a new high. So I wouldn't be surprised if the market does something like that. No. Um, so again, this market is now a hold or a take profits if you have profits. Um, but I wouldn't buy. Uh, I wouldn't chase and buy at these levels anymore. Okay. So that's my take on the market. Um, congratulations for those who were able to buy. You know, below the six thousand levels and are still holding your their positions up to now. Um, uh, but if you got left out of this move in the market, I suggest you just, you know, wait for a better opportunity in the next couple of weeks or a couple of months. Okay. So before I continue with my video, I'd like to thank uh, one of my sponsors, AAA Equities. If you'd like to trade with a broker that uh, uses um, automated uh, buy or sell stops do trade with AAA equities uh, and if you'd like to trade with a broker that has excellent research do trade with APS online okay so so let's get on with the video uh, for tonight and our main topic for tonight is actually the earnings no since you know earnings are just um uh finished for the third quarter uh, i think i guess 95 percent of companies have already reported no um and of those that reported these are the top 10 that caught my eye no and uh were quite spectacular in their um, third quarter reports so we have sirit Pizza, LR, Seven, Apex, Rock, Bloom, GTCap, Jerry, and Shangri-La. Okay, so um, I put here the earnings for the second quarter. Okay, and then I put here the earnings for the third quarter, and then I uh, this is the earnings for the third quarter of 2021. And these are their growth numbers vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the third quarter, you know, comparing the, the, the third quarter from 2021-2022. I also put here the P-E ratios. Uh, I used a nine-month annualized P-E ratio. So I got the earnings for the last nine months and then annualized it you know, uh, for 12 months. And then for my last uh, column here, I, I placed whether the earnings were actually a surprise. No? And there were actually two companies that surprised the market. No? And when I say the market got surprised, no? like for example, Sirit, it, if you compare it with the 2021 report, it was actually very good right? because uh, the growth was like 939 percent but this isn't actually unexpected because in the second quarter it already reported 300 million income okay so it's not really unexpected that it was gonna report another 300 million for the third quarter right? so that's not a surprise okay pizza also for example uh, reported 173 million last quarter and then reported 204 million in the third quarter. So that's not really a surprise either, diba? Unlike LR, okay, LR, 
LR lost money in the third quarter of 2021 and also lost money in the second quarter of 2022. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, declared 429 million uh, pesos in Q3. Okay, so that was a surprise. Okay, <clears throat> another another one that uh, kind of surprised me was GTCAP. No, um, third quarter of 2021, um, it reported almost two billion income. Uh, second quarter of 2022, it reported almost four billion, and now for the third quarter. Uh, 2022 it reported 6.6 .6 billion wow okay so um, that surprised me as well no and I guess most uh, people in the market too no and I also highlighted here um, those stocks that have pretty low um, PEs no so um, of course again the ideal stock to buy is something that has very big growth no but is trading very cheap no so uh apex as well as gtcap uh, are perfect candidates for these no so they have strong growth gtcap grew by 233 percent okay yet is only trading at less than five times pe Apex from 478 million loss to an eight to a 898 million income, okay. Um, but it's still trading at just three times P. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, there you go. No, um, among these among these issues. Um, the one the stocks that i i'm really looking at right now of course are gtcap okay uh apex and lr because you know lr because it's surprised uh, apex because of its low valuation okay and of course uh gtcap both because it surprised the market and because of its low valuation um i would also uh not disregard of course see it because of its huge growth um uh, if it can sustain 300 million income every quarter then you know um who knows the dividends might even increase next year diba? so there you go no so that's my um uh, that's my take for the earnings uh, and the, those are my buy candidates right now okay so we've seen now the the best of the earnings reports let's now look at the worst okay okay here are the top 10 worst earnings reports uh, for Q3 no um, you have your San Miguel, Phoenix, CHP, Shell, Wholesome, DD, PNB, Mark, Dito, Felix. Okay, so just li like what I did uh, earlier, dun sa, um, those that reported good earnings, you have here the, the column for the Q2 2022 earnings, the Q3 2022 earnings, the Q3 2021 earnings. I also uh, indicated here the price to book. I couldn't really use the PEs because some of them had uh, negative PEs. So I just um, uh, uh, I just used the price to book instead. No, and then of course for my last column, I I indicated whether um, the the earnings report. Or the loss, the losses report uh, surprised the market, no. And um, San Miguel hasn't really been doing good this year, no. But 
I think the market got quite surprised when it reported almost 14 billion loss in, in Q3, no? I'm quite surprised that, you know, San Miguel is still trading near 100 bucks right now, no? Despite the, the huge uh, loss in Q3, okay? And Phoenix, of course, um, we, we know that... Um, uh, Phoenix, uh, we know that the the, comp, uh, the company has not been performing very well in the last couple of months, no. Um, and in Q in Q3 2021, it reported 82 million uh, loss. But I think just like Shell and also Petron, no. Uh, which also did not do very well in Q3. Um, they probably bought oil at pretty high levels, no? And uh, sold them in the market uh, uh, when when they, they were selling at, at low prices already. That's why they all got hit, no? Uh, so Phoenix, uh, Shell... Okay, uh, that's why Shell also um, took a big hit in Q3. Okay, so that was quite a surprise also. No, um, CHP hasn't been, you know, it's been losing money uh, for quite some time already. No, and uh, so 552 million net loss isn't really a surprise. No, okay, but for the others, like holds him for example um, that was quite surprising because uh, it made 669 last year it made 240 million in Q1 uh, sorry in Q2 and then suddenly took a hit in Q3 you know um, double dragon okay double dragon from 3.5 billion income last year only made less than 200 million in Q3, okay? Uh, PNB, okay? Um, from 2 billion last year and from 8.2 billion uh, in Q2 uh, of this year, only made 270 million uh, in Q3, no? I'm quite surprised actually why PNB has been quite strong in the last few weeks. No, maybe uh, the Q4 figures are a lot better than what they did in Q3. That's why it's going up. I'm guessing. I don't. I actually don't know why. No. Um, other disappointments were in Mark and Felix, probably because also just like uh, Shell and Phoenix, you know, uh, prices of commodities dropped during the quarter. So for Felix, the price of copper and gold. You know, for Mark, it's the price of nickel, no? So probably they got affected by that. And um, the most surprising of all is the, or, well, not really, no surprising, but I mean, the loss is getting bigger. That's what's surprising to me, no? They they lost six, almost six billion in Q3, okay, from... Uh, last year they only lost 3.2 billion um, and in the in, in Q2 they lost 4.6 billion so um, you know uh, I can't imagine a company how it can sustain itself if they're gonna lose what 5 billion every quarter if you'll notice the price to book is already negative no which means um, their liabilities may be a lot bigger already than their assets, no? And so they have a risk of of uh, being insolvent, no? So um, I would definitely avoid Dito right now, at, no? So given its uh, financial condition, okay? given that you know it's bleeding by you know like five billion every quarter okay um i would of course also um um avoid san miguel 
Phoenix and Shell, well, of course, it will depend if the price of oil recovers. No? If you see that prices of oil and other commodities are starting to go up again, then you can just guess and maybe um, gamble that their, their earnings next quarter will be better. Okay, so the same goes with Mark and Felix. Okay, but for the others like CHP, Wholesim, Double Dragon, I would, I would avoid them completely. No, uh, PNB is somewhat of a mystery to me. No, because the price action is actually quite strong the last few weeks. So maybe there's something. Uh, maybe the market is anticipating something bullish for PNB. That's that's why it's acting that way. So that's my um, uh, conclusion for the earnings report this Q3. I hope you learned something from this uh, report and from this video. And uh, I'll see you all again next week or maybe two weeks from now. Uh, Goodbye.